Oh, look at this crowd. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. And look, there's artwork all over the walls, and you can't see it right now, but um, we'll turn the lights on after, after we've had the launch, so people can walk around and have a better look. We've got the, the lights off for a reason. Um, but I'll just explain first. Welcome, everyone, to the NT Writers Festival in Alice Springs. I'm Danny Powell. I'm the director of the festival. And um, I'd also like to welcome those of you joining us via live stream. So the camera's up the back <laughs> are taking this session and other sessions in the festival to um, people across the NT and South Australia. So hello to Tennant Creek, Bachelor, <laughs> to Boralula, to Luca, to Darwin and Palmerston, and Port Augusta. So, the Australia Council um, for the Arts for the Festival Outreach Grant Program for enabling this. This is a pilot um, for us and it's a good pilot because um, so far we've, we've got a good uh, festival happening. Everyone's coming to events. It's been very exciting. Um, so firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the Aranda people, the traditional owners of this country, Mbantua, where we're here today. I'll acknowledge the Aranda um, elders past and present, and also the senior Aranda people who are with us today. There are many. Thank you everyone for coming to the book launch of Aia Tafakota, Aranda Stories About Birds, stories written and painted by Teresa Ryder. The illustrations adorn the walls of this gallery. The book is, is, is over here on the table, so when the session's finished, you may even ask Teresa to sign the book for you buy the book and um, take it home and have a closer look and read the stories. But now um, I'm handing you over to Jodie Clarkson who will talk about this beautiful book. Thank you. Good morning everyone. <coughs> Good morning and well done Danny and the crew for pulling off this wonderful festival again. It's an honour to be sitting here beside Teresa this morning, one of our living treasures here in Alice Springs. Um, I work at the Aranda Language Office on a Friday, working on some other projects. I did a little bit of work with Teresa, but Margaret Carew has done most of that work. So Margaret's um, got some words here for me to read out, so I'll start with that. This is from Margaret. Teresa, I'm sorry I can't be beside you today to help you launch your beautiful book, Yeyefepa Kredah. Arunda stories about birds. But I'm thinking about you from far away and my spirit is here with you. This is a bit like how I always think about you every time I hear Chukich, the babblers, <coughs> jumping around and carrying on outside my window. Or when I, when I hear Ngapa, the crow, calling in the morning before dawn and remember the family members who have left us. And when I sit at work sometimes late in the day, I hear Iranda, the black cockatoos, as they settle in for the night. <coughs> when I hear them, I think about how beautiful they are with their glossy black and red tail feathers. <coughs> I also wonder what they taste like, because these are one of the birds you like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned so much about many things working with you on this project. You've been a patient language teacher, and you've always taught me how to see things through your eyes. I thank you. I would also like to say thank you to all of the staff at Bachelor Institute in Alice Springs who have made Teresa welcome as one of our team. In particular, I'd like to mention DPC Elder in Residence, Harold Furbar. Is Harold here this morning? who backed the idea of setting up the Aranda Language Office as a place where people can meet and work on language projects. I also say thanks to Mike Crow, who supported the Aranda Office while he was working at the DPC. Teresa's book <coughs> excuse me, is built around a stunning artwork. Thank you to Sarah Martin for digitally mastering these paintings. Big thanks to Christine Ruland for her professionalism and creativity in designing the book. Christine is the designer of choice for many of us who work on Aboriginal language books. And when you look at this book, you will see why. I honour her patience with us fussy linguists and the detailed proofreading that has been required to get the text right. Also, say thank you to another fussy linguist, Jenny Green. 
who proofread the other text and helped with spelling and translations. The book has a companion app, and this means you can hear Teresa talking about the birds, and the birds talking about themselves and amongst themselves. You can find more information about this inside the book on the back page. The app has been created as part of the Getting in Touch project, a partnership between Bachelor Institute and the Research Unit for Indigenous Languages at the University of Melbourne. Thanks also to David Stewart who recorded the bird calls that are on the app. David made sure we got calls that he, he recorded here in Central Australia and so the sound of the app really are the sounds of this country. Thank you to everyone who has contributed to this project, including those who helped today. Um, Beth, thank you, and everyone who helped with lips. Have a great launch, everyone, and I hope you enjoy the cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Margaret. And just on the note of the cake, if anyone's looking for a cake, this cake was made by Angela Tranter and her business. And these cakes are made with love, so when you're eating this cake, you're not just eating a cake, you're eating love. <laughs> <laughs> you need a cake. This is just beautiful. <laughs> So, Teresa, this beautiful book. Yeah, yes, Deppa Kurda. Why did you do this beautiful book? What motivated you? No. <laughs> 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 So what was the motivation? Why did you decide you wanted to make this bird book? Well, um, I thought about making a book about birds because when you around the place you see birds of every kind, you know, everywhere. Mm. And um, the idea of me making a book about birds was for our younger Arunda children and everybody else, you know. And um, when they grow up, they can learn about birds, you know. And when they look at my book, they can re recognize the birds, you know. Yeah. And they can learn that the yeah. birds are the messengers. Even um, know about the birds that are food to the Aboriginal people, and um, some are not. And a lot of the birds are messengers. Yeah. That's the reason I'm at the idea of making this book. So those birds tell us where to find water, where to find food? Yeah. Whether there's people coming into country? Yeah, like crows. Everybody knows crows are nuisance birds. <laughs> <laughs> but in a way, they make sounds, you know, singing song, um, sounds. They can also make um, crying sounds. When you hear crows talking, you know, maybe early hours in the morning, and if they're making a crying sound, that um, when you know that you're going to get something, some bad news or something. It happened to me three times, you know, some of my family, a lot. I, I heard that crow sound, which was making a crying sound. And um, finches are the different birds, those little red ones, I mean red, the ones with red beaks. They show you water. If you was in a camp and you go for a walk about with water and you might go too far out from your camp and run out of water. You come across little finches out of bush and um, you follow them, you know, just see where they fly. They might come down onto a tree and sit down and you might stand and watch them, you know what they do. You might see them flying down onto the ground. And that's telling you that there's a puddle of water, a spring, 
were a rock all day. And that's when you find water. They never go too far from the water, do they? Because no. what they eat is very dry. They just eat those little tiny seeds that don't have mm. much water. I love oh, the way... Sorry. A couple of the regions of two birds that I know of and that are in this book. What's your favourite one to eat? What one makes your tummy grumble? When you see it flying, you're like, oh. Is it this one? <coughs> no, Toa. Toa, is that your favourite? That's my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people toa. like the Toa. Where is he? Everybody go out hunting for a Toa. There he is. <laughs> I love the way with the Toa here, you've captured its habitat. It's country, it's a mura. You've also captured its personality and how it's feeling right now. <laughs> it's like, I oh, know trees want to eat me, I'm out of here. <laughs> so beautiful. So, where, did you, where were you born and where did you grow up, Teresa? I grew up on um, Todd River Station, that's east of Alice Springs. And what's your earliest memories of? Pepper or birds. I used to walk around with my uncle and my family, you know, go out bush, see different birds at times, and ask my old people what are the names of the birds, and they tell me, you know, they're food for us, and those other ones there, they're not food, or something like that. What about <coughs> quarter, the eggs? Did you sometimes eat the eggs of the birds? No. No? I might have when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> Not when I was big. But as kids, you know, you eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> lizards and all. Rain lizards. And when did you become interested in painting? Well, I... Uh, at Santa Teresa School, mm -hmm. I started off doing sketches on slates with slate pencils and then on to paper with crayons and then on to <coughs> colored pencils and students' colors, paint, and then um, artist paint. Mm -hmm. And I like doing sketches and paintings and then um, got interested and kept on doing paintings. I still do watercolour paintings today. They're so beautiful. So you have the front of the Aranda Language Dictionary. That's one of your artwork, isn't it? Yep. And was painting birds, was that new for you? You've done a lot of landscapes. Was painting birds a new thing for you too? Painting birds was the first time I did it. Yeah. I never painted birds in my life. <laughs> And when you were painting them, you, you become quite intimate with them when you're mm -hmm. painting them and thinking about the colours and the And stories. thinking about the birds when you see them out bush, you know? Yeah. I had that in my mind while I was painting. And did that bring back some memories to the front of your mind? Did it bring back some yeah. old memories? seeing the birds out bush, you know, when walking around with families. back memories to me. They're beautiful. And so art is in your blood, isn't it? Because you're a distant relative of Albert Namajira, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when I started painting at school, I didn't know anything about old Namajira. I didn't know he was a great artist out there. Mm -hmm. I never knew anything. <clears throat> Until down the, down the track, I found out that he was a great artist. And um, later on in the year, my mum told me that he was a distant uncle. <laughs> and that's where my art and my talent come from, I reckon. Mm. Have you ever had any lessons? Or are you all self-taught? No. Oh. It's just stunning. So some of these birds, they sing their own name, don't they? Yeah. For this one. Ticha Tichara. 
Tell us a little bit about Chicha Tichira. That's another messenger, that one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what does this one tell us when we see this little one? When you see, um, when you wake down, yeah. mm -hmm. you know there's winter coming. Mm. And one afternoon I was sitting down in my house painting, and my cousin come over and sat down with me. She brought along uh, two granddaughters, seven and eight year olds, and I was doing, trying to do painting and they were distracting me, you know, <laughs> running in and out of the house, and I said to, to my cousin, give them icy pole and tell them to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> so they went outside. It was just before sundown, and um, Little Willie Wagtail was outside flying around, you know. And um, so my cousin said, I'll oh, better take these girls back because they're being nuisance. <laughs> and when they went, um, they come in from the back door and they went out. I was sitting down on my own, then I could hear the little Willie Wagtail talk and talk and talk non stop. <laughs> I was thinking he might be seeing something outside, a snake or something, rat or something. And uh, I thought to myself, I better go and look, you know, find out what what's he making noise about. And when I went through the corridor to the laundry, that laundry door was wide open and it was very dark outside. That little Willie Wagtail was singing out for me, telling me the door was open. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I talked to him about it. Thank you, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> and when I shut the door, he flew away. <laughs> He's a little messenger. Cute little one. You can talk to him with sandpaper. <laughs> And then they'll talk back to you. Think you're sanding something. <laughs> now sing their own name. That's some of the reason I made this book about birds. Yeah. <clears throat> Leah. So tell us about Leah, the emu. It's an important source of food. <coughs> Did you see many growing up out in Eastern Island in the country? Was there lots out there? Yeah. Yeah? Was it sort of a food that you ate very often? That's our main curra. Curra <laughs> <laughs> means meat. Anyone who doesn't know, I don't know. And did you eat the eggs of this one then? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of food in one egg. Mm -hmm. Lot of so when you look at this book and you see the bird in its home, it's so different to when you open up a Western bird ID book and you see a perfect example of a bird, but it just sits in this white empty space <laughs> on the page. It's like the bird is part of a collection, a stamp collection. Whereas here, the bird <coughs> sits in its home, it's part of its home. It's, it's beautiful and indicative of the different ways that we look at the world and how it's all connected. Who else sings their own name? I'm trying to think. Which one? Oh, we talked a little bit about. A tithara. What do a tithara tell us? The budgerigars. Well, oh, they just <laughs> enjoy themselves in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> they always look like they're having a party, especially when they're by the water hole. <laughs> that flash of colour when you when you're out bush. It's exciting. <laughs> Ilinja. Ilinja. So when you I told him I'd be out. The galah. So all of the parrots seem to be good food. Okay. 
What's your favorite one? That's Otoa. One of, that's, your food. that's one of our food. That's one of your foods? And he's also a messenger too. Yeah, what does he tell us? Like if you're camping out in the bush at night. Yeah. And tell us always <coughs> sleep in the gum trees mm -hmm. or in the big trees. And it's very quiet if you can ask talking. That means something's disturbing them. Yeah. And you've got to look out, you know. It might be a dingo or a wild cat or something else. So it's a warning. It's a warning to tell you. Well, this book is a gift, Teresa. Thank you for this gift for all of us, for your family, for your friends, for your community. And thanks for sharing some stories with us. I'll hand over to Thank David you. now. I think um, Teresa brings together in this book two things that I'm very fond of. And one is trying to learn language, <laughs> the Islander language, which I've been trying and struggling with for many, many years. But, but in the way that it's set out in here with um, the English and, um, and the Islander, it really brings the two things together so you can actually connect. You just need a dictionary as well, probably, <laughs> too. Um, but, um, Go outside and, and see your kids, mm. The um, I just like to share one little story about a churrigan. The churrigan. Uh, the, um, you can learn to say that word. Go on. You've got to finely tune my hearing. I think I'm saying it the same as you are, but I'm not. <laughs> and um, on our property at Campfire in the Heart, we've got lots of them. And they're, they're just the most wonderful nesting birds, and they keep on building, 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 and they all live communally. And at night or late afternoon, they dance all around, dance all around. They, they oh, sit on, cool. lie in the sand, and the other one jumps on them. They chase each other around. They're the most fun birds around. And then gradually, as night comes, they uh, make their way up to the net. And you see them all sitting up on the on the branch, one at a time, going into this nest. And how many can fit into that? Net? <laughs> and uh, they're making all this noise all the time. And when the last one goes in, it's like lights out. <laughs> it's, it's dead silent. But there was one day that uh, there was a little one, a baby bird, had dropped out of the nest and was, was lying on the ground. And I walked past it and I thought, oh, I should go back and do something with that bird, but I was busy. And I, but I came back just a few minutes later and around it was a ring of a chocolate. Still a One of those. <laughs> <laughs> and they were going, I can't see this really. Because they go, a chorigata, a chorigata, a chorigata. Mm -hmm. you know, they were talking to this little one on the ground, all in this little row. And it was amazing to see them. And then they, as they do, they that sort of hop away and they all together sat on a seat, or a sleeper seat over here. And they turn around together, a chorigata, a chorigata. They were, come on, come on, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> and then they went back and around and again encouraging this little one and went across to another place. And well, I've never seen anything like it, the encouragement of this, this whole communal field of birds, which is quite extraordinary. And they're in here, so that's really nice for me to be able to see them. One of the things I'd love to do is to put a little video camera up in one of those nests and see what goes on and how they sleep, because there's a dozen or 15 in there every night. And one of the <laughs> It'd be warm. Um, but Teresa, it's been lovely to know you over this last, um, well, it's probably 18 years that we've known each other mm -hmm. and worked together from time to time and done different things and, and shared lots through that time and we get together once a week now to do language work as well. Um, and um, really I suppose the thing for me to do right now is to say I want to launch this book. <laughs> uh, um, but launch doesn't seem appropriate. Let it fly! <laughs>
should do is to please could you say the title of this book because we need to know what it is. Now I would say a year dapper cook a, a year story dapper cook. Is that right? A year give us a lesson, could you? Yeah. What? And so that we can all it. say this. Yeah. And when name we go to the, the bookshop name of the book is called book. A Year Book uh, Dapa A Year, a year. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Story about birds. <laughs> so now you know what to do when you go to the bookshop. You know how to order it. You put that name, and you have to. They won't sell it to you unless you can say. It. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, but we are now in the country. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming this morning. We do need to clear this space. There's another um, um, session in here at 10 o'clock. Uh, which is the territory in between uh, the online journal Ahmad Adam will be will be presenting and at 10 o'clock <coughs> down in the gazebo which is the space down if you just walk down here um, we have invited Tim Lowe to talk today about our relationship with birds across time so apparently Tim and Teresa know each other as well from a long time ago so We'll be going down to that session. So you will um, need to get tickets for that session, of course, from the ticket box at the front. Um, or if you've got your tickets, you can just go down to the door now. Thank you so much for coming, and please go and see the book. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll cut the cake, so maybe we can cut the cakes and then put it to the